So, Sadie, so this can't be the last season. I mean, uh, is, is there a sense that uh, you could potentially continue after this next block of episodes, or it's going to kind of be a, like a play it by ear scenario? I don't know, because I, I don't know how these decisions are made. I mean, I, I think it's I think it's entirely possible that this would be the last 13 episodes aired on CBS. <laughs> That makes me nervous. <laughs> but, but I, I suppose it's not outside the realm of possibility that it could to go continue. to another broadcaster or something. But I don't know who that would be, and I don't know who could absorb. It, it would have to be a changed show for budgetary reasons, if, if no other. It's a really expensive show. Right. But maybe if it took a turn inward and became a little more conceptual, potentially. Yeah, yeah, maybe that could work. I don't know. What is Finch this season? What's he's starting out? What's his major conflict? What's his? What does he want? How's he going to get there? Tell us the ending. He's in. <laughs> <laughs> he's in full improvised mode. It's a. It's a mad scramble. They're all doomed. I mean, they're they're all doomed because Samaritan really is in charge. Yeah. So they they have to go even deeper underground. And priority one is to. To reboot the machine because with, without a machine, they, 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 there's nothing they can do. I love the, the final shot of last season where it's all three of you walking out in slow motion with one guns blazing. Um, and I love that you're you're not holding any weapon, it's just the suitcase. <laughs> I love that, and that you're very confident that nothing's going to happen to you. Like, what what is your mindset now? Do you feel like you might need a weapon, or do you feel like, after that experience, do you feel like you need to be more more like Reese? As the yeah, as the as the threats surrounding them get more dire and terrifying. Mr. Finch might have to make some adjustments about certain ethical positions. You know, he might he might have to think about the possibility of violence. <laughs> now we were talking with Jim, and he was saying that his Reese's role is kind of helping Finch find faith in the machine again. Can you speak a little to that and kind of where Finch is in his headspace this season? I hadn't thought of that, but yeah, I suppose that's true. That yeah, because yeah, Mr. Finch is depressed. I guess, I guess you could say that things are not going well, and he's he's not sure the thing he's built is is doing what it should be doing. Oh, so we're here. Was it possibly all for naught? And and he and his. He yeah, and men yeah. like him yeah, have no, unleashed he says, yeah. something on the world, and it does not seem that it, it's, it's doing mankind any good. So I, I, I do think he needs uh, yes, a crisis of faith, maybe, and, and, and he needs a little bucking up. And how was the scene for you when you finally got to kind of talk with the machine? Was that kind of a big deal for you, since it was for the character? You mean at the end of season yeah. four? Yeah. Well, I thought that was an important scene. I mean, I'm, I'm really attached to that, that business of that relationship. You know, that Mr. Finch tries, puts on a show of having no, like, personal feelings mm -hmm. for, for the machine, and, and yet you, you see that the machine is just so human now that he, he has to... It's just confusing for him. He feels, you know, these parental instincts. And he feels, I guess, he has a stake in the feelings of the thing he's made. It's kind of sad and wonderful at the same time. Most definitely. Amy, <laughs> you, uh, you have been part of some of the coolest shared universes in <laughs> entertainment, Marvel, and the Weedinverse. Where does person of interest stack up with all that? I think it's, I, I really love being a part of this, and it, you know, I think when I started the show, I didn't quite, I had no idea that this is where it was gonna, gonna go, but the writers that we have, Jonah and Greg, and I, 
feel like the same as like they did this great group of people together the way that Joss did. You just know that all of these writers that we have are going to go on to do really other, a lot of cool stuff after this. <laughs> um, so tell me with, um, after the season for now, like what's What's on Ruth's mind? Is she going to continue to try to save the machine or continue to search for Sean? Well, I kind of feel like at the end of season four, when we had to sort of make a decision of what was next, and that there's never, she's ne I'm never going to stop looking at Shaw, but I know that if the machine isn't back up and running, that there's no hope for finding her and no reason. It's kind of like our world is over if we can't get the machine back up and running and get, or at least stop Samaritan. And would you take into account that um, team, team Machine has been looking for her? Um, you know, when we see Shaw after last year, it's it's been almost a year. And, um, you know, I think she hopes that they have been looking for her, but I don't think, she, but she has no clue to the outside world. You know, she's under Samaritan's wing this whole time. And, and, um, and, uh, but that's something that we are going to explore in her first episode back. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, her, her introduction this year is pretty big and dynamic, and it's definitely going to answer, I think, a bunch of questions as to how she left off last year. And, um, you know, there's a lot of, it's a very big episode. <laughs> a lot of going on, a lot of root and shawl. Yeah. Yes, that's, yeah. <laughs> it's impossible, I think, at this point for me not to talk about Groot when talking about my character. Because it seems to be such a desired thing. I wonder why. <laughs> and, um, you know, so, um, but, you know, I, this kind of seems to be this thing that I keep talking about today, and I'm, I'm more than happy to have discovered this, is that um, when I was on the L Word, I didn't realize how impactful that was to women, men, you know, specifically lesbian audience, and I would get letters uh, telling me, you know, how important my character was, how it helped them come out, they thought about killing themselves until they watched the show, and then now they feel like they've got this renewed faith in themselves, and they can, you know, and and to be kind of, you know, and when I left the other world, I thought that was that was kind of it, my, my time with that on screen, until I've this. And, you know, the audience is going to be very pleased with what they see between Root and Shaw. I'll just say that much. Um, but I'm also more than happy to continue on this this thread, you know, to give the LG uh, BT audience something to look up to and to emulate and to find some kind of, you know, hope and strength in. So, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like at this point it's impossible to talk about my character without touching upon this because it's become such a thing for the two of them, you know? If the show is truly going to be over after the season, what are you most proud about? What would you like people to kind of remember the show by uh, in a couple years when it's actually on Netflix streaming off the air? What would I like for them to remember? I think they really, you know, it started out as this procedural and then I just feel like the creator, creative team decided that this was something that they wanted to make the show and that, There's something you know, more to it. They made it, they went there, they weren't afraid to like leave behind people who wanted the procedural element. They, they kept it in, but they also were willing to push boundaries and make things happen that didn't seem to necessarily fit into the, the show was, was part of.